YouTube, team keep it clean, what's going on, it's Engraven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you'd like to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com, or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, all that good stuff is down below in the description. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. We got some great questions like every single episode that y'all bring it. Let's do it. First question came from my guy Alonzo. He said, what helps you remember about past Ravens history? Um, I guess just having watched a lot of it and um, just a, a lot of memorable moments. Uh, and I, I, don't, I don't even know. I, I, I really don't even know. That's a really uh, very interesting question. When I just now opened this email, I was like, okay, what's this, what's this question going to be about? But I didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, I guess just... Having so many memorable moments and having um, mm, having talked about a lot of it over and over and over and over and over again, I think that that's one of the parts that that probably helps the most. Always talking about it. Next question came from my guy Desmond. He said, "What's up, engraving? Long time subscriber, but only my second time commenting. I have to ask this question: Did we break an NFL record for most called draw plays? <laughs> this guy, man." <laughs> Oh, he said, I stopped counting after like 10. Seemed like 98% of our run plays were a draw. I'm not one calling for jobs, but Giro got to go. And if Hobbs can't see that, maybe he got to go also. Ooh, yikes. Uh, P.S. On that delay of game penalty at the end of the game, how come Hobbs didn't catch that? Come on, man. In my engraving voice, help out your young quarterback. Mm. Yeah, that, 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 that was very costly. Because you lose five yards and in the red zone, it's already hard enough. It's already tough enough to score in the red zone, but when when that happens, you lose five more yards. And I'm not sure what happened there. I, I know Tyler Huntley said he felt like they got okie doped. Um, he he said he felt like they got it the snap off in time. When we're watching the game live, it didn't look like it. But sometimes the live clock and the uh, the clock that's actually at the stadium is a tiny tiny bit different. But I don't know, it ain't, it ain't look like he got it off in time. but And it ain't even look like it was just so close either. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is at this point. Um, but, yeah, the draw plays, they, uh, they've they been rough. They've been rough. Except even though la this last week against the Rams, they they actually worked. They worked. And I was just, I was shocked, surprised, because y'all know I don't I do not like those draw plays. I don't like the, the design QB runs. Um, but anyway, I... Um, yeah, with 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 with, with Giro, um, I mean, I, I don't I don't really know what to expect moving forward. Uh, I don't think that he'll be going anywhere. Hobbs obviously ain't going anywhere. Um, but so just gotta hope for the best of the situation. Um, just gotta hope that they make significant changes. But I mean, it, it is what it is. Uh, and yeah, as far as that delay of game penalty, it's been it's been a lot of silly penalties um, this year, but over the years, not even just this year. Uh, the twelve men on the field, that's Ravens all day. Illegal shift, illegal what is it, no illegal formation, that's Ravens all day, right? Oh, 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 that's Ravens all day. That's them. That's them. But yeah, the twelve men on the field, it's like. Ravens, like, they, they got to fight so hard. Any NFL team got to fight so hard to be in a game. It's tough. These are professionals. They they are, they out there trying to eat, too. But if you, like, you, you going against yourself, if you going against yourself, then that makes the job that much tougher. Next question came from Eric. He said, love from Spain. Shout out to Spain. He said, hey, man, team, keep it clean from Spain. Hope you and the family are all right. We appreciate you. Uh, what moves do you think Ravens are going to do this offseason, and what do you think their main issues are uh, from injuries? Thank you. I appreciate your content, because in, in Spain, there isn't much content about the Ravens or NFL. All love. Appreciate that, Eric. Um, so what moves do I think Ravens are going to make this offseason? Uh, just one, number one, trying to get healthy. Uh, I, I don't see any, like, significant uh, front office moves or moves to coaching staff or anything like that. I think everybody uh, will be given a pass uh, because of injuries. Um, and as far as the roster, uh, I don't see them extending Lamar Jackson right now. Uh, I, I hope that he doesn't get extended right now. 
I want Lamar to be paid, but I also want him to be in a great situation. I don't want him to be uh, stuck in a bad situation for him. Um, so, I, I, but I, I don't think that they're gonna they're gonna come to an agreement on contract terms already. I, I don't see that happening. Um, but yeah, get healthy. Uh, I, Sammy Watkins, I think he'll be gone. Brandon Williams, he'll be gone. I think Calais Campbell retires. Jimmy Smith retires. Probably, you know, probably one of the one of those two probably gonna come back. If I had to put money on it, I, I would say probably Calais coming back over Jimmy. But yeah, both of them could be out. Um, I think that Tavon Young, oh, it's tricky with him. I think they would either cut him or try to cut him and resign him to a different deal. I think uh, the same with Marcus Peters. I think with Marcus Peters that they he won't be back on the on the deal that he's currently on. Um, I think that they'll they'll try to bring him back though, uh, for sure. Uh, who else? Derek Wolf. I think that he's gone. Um, I think the Ravens are just gonna. Just gonna let that one go. Be like, ah, oh, we 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 tried it. Uh, we talked to him right before the draft about picking him in the draft, but oh, it was such a such a Cinderella story. Da, 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 da. But no, nah, it just it just didn't work out. Um, I think that uh, they bring in a veteran linebacker. Uh, I don't think they're gonna bring back L.J. Ford, unfortunately. Um, love that guy, man. He uh, he's just excellent for the team. Um, Josh Bynes. Uh, I don't think they'll bring him back initially, but you know, Josh, you know they're gonna have Josh Bynes on speed dial like they do every single year. Um, so yeah, well, those are all the people who I think are gonna be leaving. Oh, Anthony Averett, I think he's gone. He'll go get a deal for somebody else. Um, and yeah, uh, and, and as far as free agency, I think they do bring Devontae Freeman back uh, because you got two running backs coming back from an ACL and Achilles, so big major injuries um but you so you want to have like a sort of safe guy i think tyson williams i think they're finally gonna let him go um and so he can finally make it out the doghouse which would be good for him um justice hill uh, i think they kind of already waived him because they did like a wave injury reserve thing we'll see what happens with that uh, tyler huntley I, I think he'll end up staying I, I would love to see him get a real opportunity somewhere else if he got traded, but I would want it to be a real opportunity for him. Not just, oh, trade him just to trade him, but somewhere where he would have a real opportunity to start uh, and not just get played. Um, who else? Who else? I think that's about it as far as departures and whatnot. Uh, free agency, though. Oh, Bradley Bozeman. I think he'll walk. I think Bradley Bozeman will walk and go get, go cash in somewhere else. Um, he, he's getting ready to get a lot of money. He's getting ready to get a lot of money. Alejandro Villanueva, he could retire. So Ravens wouldn't even have to cut him. Uh, but he could retire. Uh, and yeah, wow. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a lot to talk about. And I'm sure there's more people that I missed. Oh, Pernell McPhee. Uh, Pernell McPhee, I think that this will be it for him. Anthony Levine, I think it'll be it for him. Tony Jefferson, I think they'll actually bring him back. Especially if he has a really good game against the Steelers. Oh, yeah, they're they, they going to sign him like back like right away. Um, what do you think are the main issues, uh, from injuries? Or well, I think you meant apart from injuries. Um, there's been a lot with the, 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 the philosophy, the scheme, um, that whole thing. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Well, that, that, that was fun. Next question came from my guy, Pazar. He said, hey, good brother. This is Pazar from Baltimore again. This is my second question. I'm wondering why don't we allow Malik Harrison to play more Mike? Uh, I know we have binds at Mike. Boom. There you go. And Patrick Queen sometimes too, but you just answered your own question. But anyway, he said, I know we have Bynes at Mike to me. Queen is better at weak side linebacker. Harrison has better coverage than Queen, a board, and Welch. He's a better tackler than Queen, board, and Welch. Hardest hitting linebacker we have, but lack of playing time since Kels cooked him in one game. He's young, and Kels does it all the time to just about everyone. Yeah, because that he was out there for a lot in that game. He was out there for for like forever in that game until like the very end. At the very end of the game, they were like, all right, come on, Chris Board, you go try. Um, they said he fills the gaps unlike Queen or Board uh, that's trying to beat everyone on the sideline, which causes them to overrun the play. Queen is shooting gaps now but not filling them. Why don't you think the Ravens use him as much? That's a really good question. I don't think they trust him yet, though. I don't think they trust him. Um, and then, of course, when he, um, when he got shot, 
unfortunately, good good thing he he's good though. But when he got shot, um, that like he was already set back a bit, but that like set him way back, and that like brought him way back. And it's like he was already sort of in the back of the line, but then when he after he got shot and he was out for a while, it put him out of it took him out of the line completely. And then when he finally got back on the roster, then he was all the way at the back of the line. So he had his, he was already like behind, but then he had to start all the way over again. Um, so it just it, it just bad bad timing, I think. Bad timing. Um, it was looking like this year it was gonna be Patrick Queen and Malik Harrison starting. It was looking like that. Uh, because especially when you saw preseason, you saw both of them out there. I was like, oh, okay, let's go. But then we saw the struggles, and Ravens are like, hey, Josh Bynes, what's up, big head? They hit him up, and the usual. So I think for him, um, he would have to have, like, a killer offseason uh, and just really show out a lot in order to really get a significant opportunity because this was his second year with the Ravens, um, and he was, what, a third or fourth round pick? I forget. But it's, it's tough because they can move on quickly. And when I say move on, I don't even mean release. Uh, but they can, if they see, all right, Patrick Queen, that's obviously a starter. He's obviously going to be there. But if they feel like, hey, mm, you know what? Nah, this other dude, he ain't cutting it so much. And we've had other guys step up and step in and get the opportunity. They could move on from really seriously considering him to be that Mike linebacker, Will linebacker, whichever, they could move on from considering him to do that fast. So that's why I say this offseason, he would have to have like the offseason of his life, and hopefully he does. Next question came from my guy Les. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is good with you and the fam. First off, I want to give a shout out to you for your content and riding us through this wild season. I appreciate it. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. It's been crazy. It's, it's, it's sad that it's... Uh, could be coming to an end after this Sunday. Um, but again, just a reminder, the videos, they ain't going nowhere. Uh, we still got plenty to talk about. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that this could possibly be it for the year. We're seeing the Ravens play. Oh, man. Saying that out loud makes me sad. Anyway, he said, um, when things are not going well, it's easy for people to turn on each other, even in the same fan base, which is a shame. But that's life, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, you talk about, I mean, football fans, period. They can get really nasty. People can get so nasty and so, it's, it can be so uncalled for, too. And it's, it's so sad that um, people, it could be a nice, healthy conversation. Uh, and and if some, for some people, it ain't like this for everybody, but for some people, if they don't agree on the same thing, they got two completely different viewpoints on the same issue, then they could just go at war with each other. They could start name calling, oh, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're an idiot, da, da, da. and it's just like, why? Why? Just agree to disagree respectfully. It's, it's okay. It, there is no, no, nothing wrong with disagreeing with somebody on their opinion. It's okay. But that's, some people just don't get that. Anyway, um, he said, just want to say that I appreciate your videos and like how you don't get wrapped, wrapped up in the toxicity or saltiness of some, some fans. Uh, it's just not worth it in my opinion. I also like the respect you show to other teams, whether we win or lose. Oh, that's, that's, what, that's what it's about for me, man. Um, it, like, again, all that extra stuff, all the name calling, all the just, it, it just ain't necessary, man. And there have been times when um, I've had conversations with people who are like that. But, yeah, like you said, it, it ain't worth it, man. It's, it's really not. It's really not. One of the best things that you can do uh, when people are like that, block and move on. That's it. Simple. Block and move on. Because I know some people, they like, uh, they'll reply to it and, and, and engage in it. And again, I've, I've done it myself before too. But they'll, they'll engage with it and reply to it. And, and then you'll be waiting to see what they reply. And then y'all going back and forth. And it's just, you realize it's, just, it's not worth it. It's really not. It's one thing for two people to disagree on something to be going back and forth talking about it. But it, it, so, so you can just tell with, with people if they're going to be like nasty about You can always tell. You can tell. And it, even if you can't tell initially, usually by that first response or, the, or even in the second response, an, an early response will be very indicative of how they're going to be uh, with you in that conversation. So, again, block and move on.
Uh, anyway, he said, I remember in September or whenever it was, you said the podcast was going on a hiatus, which is understandable, given how busy the season gets. Yes. I, <laughs> yes. And you see, that thing ain't been around since. Woo. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he said, with the season wrapping up soon, will the Team Keep It Clean podcast be returning? Be cool to hear about stuff other than football occasionally, especially given how disappointing and frustrating this season has been. <laughs> Much peace and love to the flock. Hey, we might, man. We might have to bring it back. Uh, the podcast was all, it was always super fun to do. I, I, I loved it. Um, I got this, it was, it was just a lot. It was just so much. And with this, this is already a, a, a lot in itself. But with the podcast, it's, um, like I said, it's fun. It's, it's always fun. But to, to do it, I mean, I, I suppose I could like take like 30 minutes or an hour or something like that to do it um but a lot of times i just I, I hadn't felt like it and i just when i have like downtime and relaxed time and i have a lot of we are very busy too even outside of this um but when i have downtime i just love my downtime i love to relax uh i love to take it easy i love just <sighs> like that I I, I I i love it and um this season, this football season has been a lot. It, it has been a lot. And I've been telling my wife, like, obviously, I want the Ravens to go as, as far as they could possibly go. But even, like, even if they did go far, uh, and, uh, of course, we still got pl plenty of playoff games to watch and, and talk about as well. But I've been telling her, I've, I've been looking forward to when this season is over uh, because I just want to take a nice break um, and we like we take vacations like during the season and stuff. We we've done that this season. Nothing nothing changed with that. Um, but a nice vacation to where it's really like ah yes. And because yeah, stuff stuff can be a lot. Some days more than others. Um, but that's why it's always important to take breaks. Take breaks. Take breathers. Take relaxers. Take all that stuff. Take breaks. And whatever it is that you do. Um, but yeah, this season has certainly been like, whew, it's been some, and not even, and I ain't even talking about because the Ravens been struggling, but this season has just been, it's been so much for me, for me, uh, and it's been through a lot this season, a lot of good stuff, a lot of accomplishments, um, been some little rough spots here and there too, uh, but it's just, it's been a lot, so um, I, I am certainly looking forward to the off season and stuff just slowing down significantly um just to really get that 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 real breather that real ah that's that's gonna be nice but for the as far as the podcast um maybe maybe during the summer i mean maybe during the off season we'll see no guarantees no guarantees but i mean we'll see because it's, it's once a week uh it was fun i enjoyed it um like I enjoyed it a lot because it again it was uh, talking about other st stuff other than football. Cause y'all know, I mean y'all see, we we could talk about football literally every single day, which we do. Uh, but it's nice to talk about something other uh, than football, just life in general, just some funny stuff that happens in our day to day lives, just uh, anything that we may have going on. I mean we ain't got nothing special going on, but um, it's just fun. It, it, it's fun having those conversations. Rather than just football, 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 Raven, 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 Raven. So, we'll see. Next question came from my guy, Jake. He said, what's up, Engraven? The name is Jake. Been watching you for a while now. And this is my first question email sent to you. Hope you're doing well along with everyone watching. See, I appreciate that. Shout out to people who give a shout out to everybody watching, too. The shout out for me, that's, uh, that's whatever. But when you shout out everybody else, that's special. Uh, but anyway, he said, I first like to start off with saying this season hasn't been as bad as everyone says. With so many injuries, we're still looking at the possibility of going positive. That's crazy good. Also, I think he meant po possibly going to the playoffs. But anyway, he said, also credit to Hobbs and all the guys that stepped, in, that stepped up in place of the injured ones. There's so many things I want to hear you talk about, like, what are we drafting? Are we going big in free agency? Who are we letting go? Also, the questioning of whether or not to pay Lamar is stupid. The Ravens are what they are now because of Lamar. We were in a horrible spot with Flacco. No disrespect, but he revamped us. With Lamar, that's making me upset. Uh, uh, with Lamar, that's making me upset is that Greg Roman is giving the same play calls to Lamar as he did with Snoop and Johnson. The up-tempo quick slants aren't given to Lamar. Oh, I think he meant he is not giving the same play calls uh, to Lamar. 
He said, that's all we did in 2019. We go away. Why do we go away from it? Um, and my question, finally, uh, I think we need a new defensive scheme. Way too many guys come up through the Ravens and hit that point of debating on whether to resign or not. I mean, you can say that about any team, really. But anyway, he said, when we don't, they go on to become animals, especially the linebacker defensive end position. Tell me what you think about it all. Oof, that's, uh, that's certainly loaded right there. As far as the defensive scheme, um, I, I, I would agree uh, because I just think guys are just asked to do way too much. So they don't get an opportunity to really hone in on one thing, to really be that. Like, who's Ravens pass rush specialist right now? Who is that? I know you could, you could oh, it, Tyus Bowser, I guess, Adafi away. Now, would you say that because you're a Ravens fan and you know the players on the team? Or would you say that because those are our true tra pass rush specialists? I feel like Ravens don't even really have one. But with, um, like, you, you, I just, and we still having this conversation and this problem with, man, Ravens, they, why can't we get to the quarterback like that? They'll get pressure sometimes, but it's like, a lot of times, why, why can't we get to the quarterback? Even against bad offensive lines, why don't we not take advantage of that? What's going on? So, Wink is not a bad defensive coordinator. He's not. Um, but I don't, I don't even know exactly what it would, well, I guess just let him pass rush is pass rush. Because that would help. Uh, having somebody that can really bring some consistent interior pressure, that would help a lot too. Uh, especially with Brandon Williams, Calais Campbell possibly both being gone. Um, so you're going to have some fresh guys up in there. Uh, but yeah, you need somebody who can bring that interior pressure because that would help out everybody. Um, but I wouldn't want that to be like a bailout for the scheme. Because the scheme is just... It's not it when it comes to the pass rush. And you know this is a passing league, so having a good pass rush, uh, it could make such a uh, uh, just a huge difference. Um, as far as uh, what are we drafting, I think that would be it. Um, that would be um, interior pass rush, uh, I would say. Um, corner, safety, uh, just a lot of stuff. Line, linebacker, um, offensive lineman, like quality depth for the offensive line. Um, he said, are we going big in free agency? No, they never do. Um, who are they letting go? Mentioned Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, and, uh, we mentioned some guys earlier in this video too. Um, but then what else he say? Oh, and also questioning whether or not to pay Lamar is stupid. Um, but yeah, like we said earlier in this video as well, um, just, I, I, I would not even want him to resign right now. Not right now, not with this staff. Nope. Just um, see see what the Ravens' philosophy is going to be moving forward, and then then I will say resign then. Because, uh, well, I mean, obviously it's up to him and, and his mom and stuff, but I just I don't think it would be wise for him to resign right now. You too, T, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it. Gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven. Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.